Bill Falk. Mr. Vaccaro. Mr. Jordan. I have some news for you. Just do it. Thanks. We all know the slogan. You didn't expect me to call? Uh, well, typically I would, I'd hear from Mr. Falk, uh, but this is a pleasant surprise, I promise. Well, listen, I told that rat bastard I'd handle it from here. I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. I've decided to accept your offer. We're going to take the $250 cash guaranteed. The 1985 Honda Civic with the chrome rims. Uh, really? Oh, don't sound so surprised, Vaccaro. No, this is no great decision. Uh, I, I, you're not going to regret it. And I, I, I can't give you my personal guarantee. I'm not finished. No, yeah, excuse, excuse me, sorry. Go ahead. We're willing to accept this offer with one minor condition. Name it? We're going to need you to not make any more movies with Ben Affleck. I'm sorry? Listen, we all know it's fun, but nobody is believing that you're Vicaro and he's freaking Phil Knight. You're just playing yourselves. It's time for this to stop. So that's not how the business works at all. I mean, I, I understand the assumption, but... Look, I saw the last duel. Ben dyed his hair yellow. Yeah, so actually we think that's a benefit to him. I mean, I kind of like the movie even if Jodie Comer carried you guys. But I saw the box office, bro. I understand what you're saying. I, I actually agree with you. Hey, film friends. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be reviewing Air. If you're new to the channel, our format is simple. We'll start off with a quick synopsis, then we'll discuss some likes and dislikes before concluding with a bit of deeper analysis on the themes and some of my own original thoughts on the film. For those of you who have been here before and know the deal, feel free to skip around and use the timestamps in the description below. And of course, as always, please stay to the end to get our FOF rating out of five stars. Without further ado, this is Air. Air reveals the unbelievable game-changing partnership between a then-rookie Michael Jordan and Nike's fledgling basketball division, which revolutionized the world of sports and contemporary culture with the Air Jordan brand. This story follows the career-defining gamble of an unconventional team led by Sonny Vaccaro, who put everything on the line. The uncompromising vision of a mother who knows the worth of her son's immense talent and the basketball phenom who would become the greatest of all time. All right, let's start with what I liked about Air. Look, there's a version of this review that just says this is a pretty paint-by-numbers docudrama that relates a story many of us have already come to know, perhaps right here. But most dramatic batting lineups don't have sluggers like Damon, Affleck, Bateman, Viola Davis, Chris Messina, Chris Tucker, Marlon Wayans, and on and on. The cast is just stellar here. Jason Bateman basically just picks up and dusts off his snarky, smartest guy in the room, Arrested D shtick. And Chris Messina is just chewing scenery here. His apoplectic explosions on the phone are the comic relief. And the other bit players are great too. Now some may argue that this is in the ballpark of Damon's very best work. This is kind of in his wheelhouse, after all. Damon is great at putting on a few pounds and de-glamorizing himself. Being just one of the regular people, but also having this finely honed sense of something that is above all the rest of his scene partners. And some of the sequences slap, too. That Damon monologue near the end? Totally rad. I knew exactly what was coming and which buttons Affleck was trying to push, and they got me anyway. There's also a captivating phone combo between Damon's Vaccaro and Viola Davis as Jordan's mother, Dolores. The back and forth, the gravity of the words being exchanged, the final reveal of the immense strength of conviction that she had about her son. And can we just give Viola Davis all the awards? I mean, she bats a thousand. Ah, wrong sport. Her free throw percentage is better than Steph's? She is the woman king. Anyway, that scene points to another strong feature of the picture, namely the quick conversational dialogue of Alex Convery's script. There's a lot of rat-a-tat, back-and-forth exchanges, which are sometimes funny, but are strong more so because of the chemistry they reveal between the characters. It's character building and suffuses 
the whole affair with emotional resonance. All right, let's move on to some of my dislikes of Air. Okay, so look, the biggest thing that bothered me about this film, I just never bought that these guys were real people at all. Yeah, I get it. There are movie stars, and part of that it factor is the charisma that they bring to each role, and how there is a little bit of themselves in all that they portray. You know, I've already talked about Damon's everyman affability and knowingness. But Affleck's energy is much more sort of sharp-edged, nervy, and almost melancholic. All of his greatest performances seem to tap into his sadness and neuroses. His depiction of Phil Knight here seems as prone to jump from a great height as to try and sell shoes. But regardless, none of these guys, Bateman included, had me invested as if they were real marketing strategists and shoe salesmen. Contrast this with a film like Moneyball, which gets much more nuanced and much less big arc crowd-pleasing. Now, I've said before that most of us already know the story of Jordan and Nike, so perhaps that influenced this other bigger critique. But I feel as though Air takes sort of basic plot points and tries to shove them into the stratosphere. Little accidents of time and place or details, and then it just tries to god-level them. The more red part of the shoe design sequence is like that. It becomes clear that Affleck and Convery are trying to tell a feel-good story, which has just the right amount of rises and falls for maximal impact for widespread audiences. I just don't love when movies show their seams this much. And I think there's a more nuanced drama here that dials down some of the grandiose moments, but punches up some of the procedural nature too. Oh, so you mean Moneyball? All right, so let's move on to some of my own original thoughts on the themes of the film. So here are some cogitations that are not necessarily good or bad. I'm just kind of tossing them out there for reflection. Yes, this is Matt and Ben back together after the last duel. And I think the balance here is between a formulaic biopic versus a gritty nuts and bolts drama. Some would much prefer the highs of the former, but others might say it makes the ceiling for air good, but never great. In any case, there is still a lot of care put into this entire production. Beyond the performances and writing, look, this was shot by Robert Richardson. This is a three-time Oscar-winning cinematographer who's worked with the lights of Oliver Stone, Quentin Tarantino, and Martin Scorsese. The same can be said for all of the production design as well. On the positive side, everything here is made to look like 1984. Do we love the soundtrack? I mean, the film is peppering us with needle drops. Though using Sirius by the Alan Parsons Project, which of course became the Chicago Bulls theme song, very well played. So the question becomes whether all of that places us right there in the time or is so overt and over the top that we feel like we're being spoon-fed nostalgia. Finally, look, Air is a lot of people sitting and talking in rooms about marketing. It's about the great sneaker wars of the 80s. And that touched upon a theme which fortunately or unfortunately, Air chooses to sidestep. By that, I mean all of the socioeconomic considerations of that other 80s war. Who were buying these shoes? What did they represent? Where did they come from? What class and race? Air is largely content to make passing references to these matters and then go back to turning up the dial on the warm fuzzies of this winning story. So what do we conclude? Air is a well-honed, tightly crafted work, full of witty writing, confident performances, and a wealth of 80s era period details. It's a solid vehicle for the talents of Damon and Davis, among others, and the kind of feel-good biopic we just don't get too often anymore. A nostalgia pick that could be a hit with just about anyone, but despite its winning emotional impact, lacked some of the subtlety that would make it a picture I really loved. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this film. FOF gives Air 3.3 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know 
by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. You can also hit that little bell so you get notified each time we release a new video. It seems that my score has fallen a bit below most of the critics out there. Uh, what did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to head on over to FermanOnFilm.com where you can explore our blog and get your movie fix on written reviews, deep dives, and so much more. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.